morning and welcome to the dawn of a new era of arrival, the dawn of multi-day touring. My name is Travis Pittman and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Tour Radar. And today I'm very excited to share with you a short story about a long journey towards making the unbookable bookable. Let's rewind back to the summer of 2005. It was around this time that the likes of Booking.com, Expedia, Hostel World, and Skyscanner were making their moves to define and own the relative parts of the, their online travel industry. It was also at this time that my brother and co-founder, Sean, and I were one of thousands of Aussies living in London on a working holiday visa and using every possible moment we could to travel quite often on multi-day tours to Europe, Asia, and Africa. It was on one particular trip we decided to do, it was a, a Croatia sailing trip. And being the tech-savvy guys that we were, we decided that we'd book it online, we found a great product, we found a great price, we couldn't pay for it, so we had to wire the money uh, over a wire transfer. And 12 of us all flew in from all parts of the world to Trieste in Italy uh, to meet up and go on a, a one-week sailing journey. The excitement very quickly dissipated, and the next 12 hours looked something like this. The transfer just didn't turn up. The phone number we had in the email didn't get answered because there was no customer support. It was nighttime in, in the US. We went to the car rental desk. It was $1,000 to get from Trieste down to Zadar for a one-way rental. Thankfully, they told us there was a 10-hour a, a bus ride that went down overnight for $10, but it was leaving in half an hour. So we made a snap decision, grabbed our bags, jumped in a taxi, paid way too much for the taxi, driving 160 kilometers an hour through the streets of Trieste, just got to the train station, bus station in time, bought some tickets, bought a bottle of vodka to calm the nerves, jumped on board, and then woke up in Zadar, feeling rather crusty and tired, and I had this hope of, well, I have to find this, this place. No one had heard of this company. Everywhere we asked, no one had heard of the company we book with. We were walking around, the weight of the world was on my shoulders, and then finally we came to this little bungalow, and the lady inside, basically, when we asked desperately, do you have a booking for Pittman? She basically had a big smile on her face. Yes, of course, we've been waiting for you. Where have you been? So it was obviously, a, the rest of the trip was great, went really well, but it was a trigger for Sean and I that we didn't realize at the time to basically put us on the path to digitizing the world of touring. They say that entrepreneurial success is all about timing. And back in 14 years ago, XML and API were words that multi-day tour operators had never heard of. But thankfully, some of the big tour operators actually were getting brochures printed on the other side of the world, and they were emailing an XML file across to those uh, print shops. So we took the XML file, and we got some basic information out of it. So we got a from price, we got photos, we got the tour name, that sort of thing. And over time, as we educated the operators that the more information they could add to these XML feeds, the better it was. But you can imagine the spaghetti mess of XML feeds and APIs. Trying to pull that together into a consistent format was an absolute nightmare. And here at Arrival, we're talking about instant bookability like it's just a norm. Up until about two years ago, instant bookability was not possible for multi-day touring. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this before, saying, You'll never get a customer to book a 14-day, $5,000 tour online. It's just not possible. The complexity of the product, the transportation, the accommoda accommodation options, the meal options, visas, vaccinations, all the things you need to know before you put your credit card down should be done over the phone or directly with the customer face-to-face. So after we got Eric Blatchford, who was the first CEO of Expedia, on board as an angel investor in 2013, he was instrumental in helping us navigate the minefield of challenges of getting people to book travel online, especially a high basket-sized product like the ones we were. So things like that we learned from our own experience in Croatia, a 24-7 customer support team, local payment methods, photos, videos, single supplements, all the different aspects that you need to know for a customer in the US or Australia 
to book a $5,000 Kilimanjaro trek online for four passengers and feel confident about doing that. So some of the operator objections and misconceptions, in the very early days, it was of the opinion that, well, the internet's free, everyone can create a website, so any services or traffic or bookings originating from a, an online agent had, should have been either free or of lesser value than, than an offline agent. Now, there's different business models out there, but if an online agent is good at creating a great website, creating the user experience, having the payment methods, getting qualified leads in, and converting those leads to a booking, how is that different to a person walking in off a street to an agency and booking an offline tour? There is no difference, it's distribution. Basically, the methods and the, the tactics are different, but at the end of the day, it is about driving bookings, but it's also about driving awareness of the great products that the world of touring has to offer. Since online really became a thing, it really became apparent that the operators were asking the question, can you properly represent my brand? Can you sell the products like the way that I could do myself? And it's a, it's a great question to be asking. And my perspective is that this isn't just a question for online, this is for offline as well. You have to make sure that you really vet and you do your due diligence on the agents and the third parties who are actually selling your products regardless if it's online or offline. From our years of research and, and all the different click data we're getting, we see that it's a complex journey. We're seeing, from average, 20 days from first touch to getting through and actually confirming into a booking. They're using five unique channels during that time. They're using two devices. So to give you an example, someone searches on their computer at work, clicks on a Google listing, comes to your site. They're on the bus home, they click a Google ad on their phone, uh, sorry, a Facebook ad on their phone. They then go home, jump on their iPad, type in the name directly to the, the site, and then they get an email from you 20 days later, and then you come across and book. The other challenge that we have in the multi-day sector is that it's not really like the in-destination where you might be doing three or four trips a year. This is at best once a year, maybe once every two years. So to stay top of mind and make sure you've got people coming back to you regularly, staying inspired and wanting to come and book when they, the time is right for them to do their 14-day trip away is super challenging. So I'd hope most of you can take one or two things away today from how do you distribute your products online, regardless of if it's through your own website or through an online third party like Tour Radar. And first of all, it's around structured data. Get as much as you can into either a reservation platform like you have here, the guys offering those services here, but also into your own XML or API and ultimately make it instantly bookable. That's the user experience everyone wants these days and is expects. And for a multi-day tour, unfortunately, that's not the norm. Context and trust. Again, from that data you're putting in, make sure you have social proof, you have everything in there that makes the customers feel comfortable to be basically transacting with you online, whether it be through your own site or through an agent. And finally, I'd like to say that for those who are skeptics out there and maybe not so keen on selling online or working with online agents is to embrace the change and not fear it. Traditional agents are always gonna be around, but ultimately, if you're not putting your products where the customers want to shop, in the places they want to shop, your competitors probably will be because they're a little bit bolder and are willing to try new channels like online and online travel agents. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Travis. A couple questions. Um, so multi-day tours are all about the experience, right? So how much do you use video in your marketing trying to sell these tours online? Do you guys do interactive video, interactive Q&A? How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So video we found for a 14-day tour, photos just don't cut it. So you can't just have three or four photos. And we've invested heavily. So we've, for the last year and a half, we've been sending crews out basically taking terabytes of footage, bringing that back 
and actually using that everything from like a 15 second Instagram ad right through to 12 minute documentaries and everything in between and putting that on site for conversion as well. Yeah. And then how do you deal with you know, the, 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 the natural kind of Q&A process that, that I think is, is pretty, pretty uh, common in the selling multi-day tours, right? There's a lot of back and forth that used to be really mostly people picking up the phone. Yep. So you've digitized that experience a little bit. Can you give us a little bit more on that? Yeah, and that's, that's a key point is that with online, a lot of this stuff can be self-service and, and that's the benefit of uh, the same dumb questions you get day in, day out via email and by the telephone can be eliminated if you, if you show the right information on site. Uh, so yeah, we, through the you know, thousands of interactions that we've had with customers, we're extracting that data, creating questions and answers so that the, the things that they didn't know they need to know can be basically put in front of them before they actually yeah, need to know, okay, visas or how much do I you know, need to take spending money or, or packing lists and those sort of things. Yeah. And then how does this work for like truly custom tour operators, right? The, the ones that are really cu uh, customizing the experience from A to Z for the customer. Are these are ever going to be bookable digitally through your platform? Yeah, we're seeing it today already. So there's a lot of operators who say they're only custom, but ultimately 80, 90% of their, their bookings and passengers are doing the same itineraries, uh, pretty much. Maybe a few tweaks here and there. So what we do for those operators is say, look, create an uh, itinerary that is representative and that most people are booking uh, and put that online. And there might be some tweaks, and through our platform they can do that, they can change pricing, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, most people are taking similar trips. Uh, it's not everyone's unique and, and custom. Got it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, join me in thanking Travis Pittman, CEO of Tour Radar. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>